ou menos 30 anos, a crise do petróleo fez com que o mundo conhecesse um novo modelo de produção, The Toyota Way, um novo modelo de gestão, uma nova forma de pensar, uma filosofia. Mas será que esse modelo serve apenas para a indústria automobilística? Mais ainda, será que simplesmente esse modelo serve para produzir? É o que eu vou descobrir na minha entrevista de hoje com Jeffrey Liker, professor da Universidade de Michigan e autor de vários livros, entre eles, The Toyota Way. Eu sou o Carlos Mello e o Siga o Mestre começa agora. Professor Liker, welcome to Brazil and welcome to Siga o Mestre. Thanks. Thanks for having me on the show. Is this your first time in Brazil or yeah. the first time in South America? In South America, yeah. actually. Yep. All right. Professor, 1973, the world experienced its first oil crisis, sending a dramatic inflationary wave while reducing the economic activity. Leaders and businessmen started looking for new opportunities, new alternatives, and suddenly, this Japanese company starts to shine in the eyes of the planet, Toyota. We then started using uh, words that we have never used before. Gamba, Kaizen, Kanban. And because of that, in less than a decade, the world changed the meaning for production and manufacturing. My question is, what is the Toyota way and why has it affected the world so drastically? I, I think you're right that the uh, Toyota way has affected the world, that Toyota has affected the world very dramatically. I don't think the timing is quite like you said, although I think many people would think that, we, you know, like, like you said. Uh, in 1973, Japan really discovered the Toyota production system. And up to that point, Toyota was pretty quiet and secretive there. If you go to Japan and you go to Tokyo, they're very far away. You could find Nissan, you could find Honda, but to uh, go to Toyota, you would have to take a bullet train and go to Nagoya, and then you'd have to take a cab or another train, and another hour if you're out in the middle of nowhere, and there's Toyota. And I think they liked it that way. I think they liked to be very quiet and, and focus just on their product and how they can make their product the best possible. So suddenly in 1973, the oil crisis hit. It hit Japan as even more seriously than it hit many parts of the world because they have no resources uh, in, in the country. And uh, other companies start going down and down in Japan, companies that were starting to be successful. And then Toyota has sort of stumbles a bit, but they pick themselves up and they start to uh, make money again and they're profitable again. So it was actually in Japan that they asked, what's going on with this little company? <laughs> they weren't even supposed to be the, the, the big automaker uh, they had been discouraged from even making automobiles in Japan, and suddenly they're doing better than anyone else. So that's when TPS was discovered in Japan. It was discovered uh, after asking Toyota, what's different? What, it, what have you done differently? And they said, we've been working for several decades on something we call the Toyota production system. We are going back in time. Let me ask you, what is the what is the story about the Toyota company? I remember you saying something about the Toyota family. Right. Well, originally it started with uh, Takichi Toyota, who was a great inventor. He didn't know that at the time, but he was just trying to, to invent a better loom for uh, making clothes, for weaving cloth. And he just started tinkering and coming up with easier ways so instead of using their hands all the time, they could use their foot, feet, and gravity would uh, cause the shuttle to go back and forth. And uh, eventually that led to Toyota Automatic Loom, which became one of the best loom ma makers in the world. And then it was him, Sakichi Toyota, who then asked his son, Kichiro Toyota, to start Toyota Motor Company, the car company. So definitely he's influenced by the family. But the important thing, I think, is the philosophy of the company, which is not like an ordinary business. We're here to make money and close down things and hire people and fire people. Whatever and cost and it has. Whatever cost okay. it has. The, the purpose of the company is to contribute to society. So that's, that's questions always being asked. How can we contribute 
what is the impact of this decision on society, both the uh, community and the country and also the workers. Also, I was reading that they ask these questions today and thinking about tomorrow. That's because that's partly this. They do because ask the question. You talk a lot about long-term long -term thinking. Yes. yes, and I think a lot of long-term thinking comes from the purpose of a company. If the purpose of a company is to get rich quick and to pay shareholders this quarter, then you're not going to think long-term. But if the purpose of a company is to contribute to society, and you now have responsibility for hundreds of thousands of people, then you need to think long term. When we think of visionaries, sometimes we think of dreamers who don't actually do anything, or at least they inspire something like, say, the internet revolution, but they personally may not be very capable. But, uh, but you have to start from somehow, right? You have from to you from have an to initial point. Well, they, well, I'll give you an example. When uh, the Toyota now has the Prius and a lot of hybrid vehicles, and that was really visionary, right? Because they didn't know at the time when they invested in the Prius that gas prices would go up and that there'd be start to be some awareness of the uh, economy and global warming and all that. And, yeah, they didn't know that. Uh, so you might think that's very visionary, and they're make they leapfrog their competition. Uh, and there's some truth to that. The uh, Prius originally started as a program called the Global 21 program. And the goal of that program, and this was about uh, 15 years ago, the goal of that program was to prepare for the 21st century. And the uh, specific statement was, we haven't really changed the way we design or make cars since we started the company. We have to prepare for the 21st century or we're going to get behind. So they put together a very high level committee called the Business Revolution Team. And that's a, actually a mechanism within the company. And the business revolution team was supposed to revolutionize the business. Uh, when they looked out ahead, they, they actually predicted that uh, in the 21st century, customers would want cars that were environmentally friendly and that were fuel efficient. They predicted that. But their actual step was to go with a hybrid, which is more conservative than something like a fuel cell or an electric vehicle. So they went with a practical first step, which is a hybrid. By contrast, the General Motors, after the Prius came out, went on record in saying, we're not even going to bother with hybrids. We're going to go all the way to, uh, ele to fuel cells. That's the future, and electric cars. So General Motors actually tried to leapfrog, and Toyota actually took a smaller step. Step by step. Step by step, but Toyota had the vision earlier. Nós falamos em Toyota Way e nós falamos em TPS. Afinal de contas, qual é a diferença dessas duas expressões aqui no Siga o Mestre logo após o intervalo comercial? Música